Hello everyone and welcome to another RenPy tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be answering a viewer question uh, that was left as a comment on one of my recent videos. So before we jump into this one be sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already um, and consider hitting the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And with that let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. So this was a question from user Lord Permaflux, great name by the way. Um, and he wanted to know uh, how you make a character appear over the text box. So we want to make a sprite appear over the text box. And he said that he tried to do it through Z ordering, but no matter how he adjusted the Z order, he couldn't get the character to appear above the text box. That is true. You can't do this with Z ordering. But first of all, I'm going to show you a couple of workarounds, a couple of easier ways that you can do this. Then we're going to get a little bit behind the scenes and talk about how RenPy renders objects to the screen. And I'm going to show you how to actually make the player appear in front of the text box, which is what he wanted to do originally. But if you just want to hide the text box so it's not hiding you know, anything that you want to see on screen, there are a couple of ways that you can do that without making the player appear on top of the text box. And I'll go ahead and show you a couple of those ways now. The first one is really, really easy. Um, the second one is also pretty easy. But I'm going to show you my script file real quick. I've just got my start label, my background, my sprite, character sprite, and she's going to say hello, just one line of dialogue. That is all we really need right now. So I'm going to start that until she gets to the dialogue. And there's actually a hotkey built into RenPy. If you hit H, which I'm going to do now, H will automatically hide the text box. And then you hit H again, and it brings it back up. It just toggles it on and off. So if there's anything that the text box is hiding that the player wants to see, they can do that themselves just by hitting the H key to turn that on and off. That is the first way to do it. Um, the second way is we can actually do that uh, programmatically. We can do that inside of RenPy. So if we want to force the player to hide the text box or force the text box to hide, we can do that ourselves and not leave that up to the player. So when it comes to my games, I like to retain as much creative control as possible. And you're probably the same way. You want to tell your story the way you want it to be told. It is good to give the player the option of hiding that text box, but there are some times you want to take that control for yourself and it is really really easy all we have to do is use a statement called window hide so we're going to say window hide and that's just going to hide our text box window our dialog box and you can also put in an optional transition in here um, we don't have to use the actually you can't use the with uh, a command or the with a modifier like we did with our characters and with our scenes we just put the name of the transition so I'm going to say window hide dissolve. And actually, let's put that um, let's put that under this. So she's going to say her dialogue first, and then we're going to hide the window. This is probably going to cause the game to end immediately. So I'm going to also put in a pause statement of five seconds just so we can uh, just so we can see this happening. So now let's go ahead and run that. And now when we go it hides the text box, which effectively you know, brings our character to the front. Not technically, but you get the picture. There we go, and it ends after five seconds. Um, we can also do, uh, we can bring it back by saying window show. And I was gonna put a two second pause on it this time. So let's go ahead and try that and see what it looks like. There we go, now it's gonna hide it, and then two seconds, it'll bring it back up. There we go, but the dialogue is gone, so we'll have to put in new dialogue if we want to do that. All right, uh, so those might work okay for your purposes, and that's the easiest way to get this kind of character in front, or you know, the text box not hiding the action effect. However, if you want to actually have the character appear in front of the text box while the text box is still on the screen, there is a way that we can do that, but it's just a little bit trickier. So as Lord Permaflex said, he tried to do this through Z ordering, and I'll go ahead and explain why that won't work. Um, there are several different layers that are built into, uh, into RenPy. I won't get into a full discussion of the layers, but I will tell you that basically everything that... Um, Everything that's rendered to the screen, as far as the characters, the background, like all of the stuff that we do with the scene and show statements, those are all on one layer. So when you change the Z ordering of the graphics, it changes the Z ordering 
on that layer. The text box is on a completely different layer uh, that's called the overlay. Um, and the overlay, um, or I'm sorry, it's not the overlay, I think it's the screens layer. It's uh, the master layer is the bottom one. That's where our graphics appear, the scene and show and all of that stuff. Then we have a layer called transient screens and overlay. I believe that those are the, uh, are the four different layers. And I think that the, uh, the say box, the dialog box goes on the screens layer, which is always on top of the master layer. So no matter, no matter what you do, it's always going to appear on top. One of the things that I love about RenPy, of course, is that you can use, um, is that you can use Python statements to, to control what RenPy does at a fundamental level. So there's always a way, pretty much always a way to do what you wanna do. It just might be a little bit trickier. Thankfully, this one is actually not too tricky. Um, so I'm gonna show you what you can do. We're gonna create an init Python block, and we're going to use that to create our own custom layer that we're going to add in. Um, and so when we run init Python, so remember now we're using pure Python code, and since it's in an init block, it's going to run at initialization. So this is going to be one of the first thing that runs before our games run, uh, before our games starts running. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. There's actually a variable that's built into Python that keeps track of what all of our layers are. And that variable is config.layers. So um, I've seen a couple of different ways of doing this. And one of the first ways that I found of doing it is just to basically put all of the layers in there and just add yours on the end. So you'll add like a master, transient and you add all of these in as a list so if you haven't seen my list video be sure to check that one out I'll post to that above and if you remember from that video there is a way that you can add or append things to the end of a list without redefining the entire list so by doing it this way by adding all of the layers in it's basically redefining something that we already have that's going to increase the length of our code it's going to take more time and it's also going to leave more room for mistakes so what we're going to do is we're just going to say config.layers.append and then in parentheses we're just going to add whatever our new layer is so i'm just going to call this top so it's going to add this to the end of our list which means it's going to appear on top of all of the other layers um, for right now. All right, and that's really all you have to do for that. Then when we bring our character in, um, we're just going to put one extra thing at the end. So we've got show Chelsea neutral, and we're going to say on layer. So this is going to, uh, to uh, uh, specify the layer that we want her on. And I'm going to say on layer top just like that. So now when she comes in, and actually I'm gonna put this after the dialogue. I don't think this is 100% necessary. Actually, I'm positive it's not, but it'll work better for what I'm wanting to show you. There we go. So there, so now we've created our layer, put it at the end of the list by appending it, and then we're going to show her on the top layer, which is going to appear above that. So let's go ahead and run that and we'll see what that looks like. Oops, and yeah, it immediately went away. Let me, oh, there we go. Yeah, and it's appearing on top of everything, by the way. So it's gonna appear on top of our quit screen as well. And we'll see if we can clean that up in just a moment. Let me do this. I'm gonna put um, some other dialogue in there just so we can see what's happening. Let's say, Chelsea is approaching. Uh, then she's going to talk, say hello, and I'm gonna get rid of these window hide statements, and we'll leave that pause statement in there. There we go, now we should be able to see that illustrated a little bit better. Chelsea is approaching. There she go, and she appears on top of the dialog box just as we, uh, just as we had intended. And that's pretty much it, so that's how we create our own layer, and then adding a character to that layer. So that will about do us for today. Of course, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, leave me a comment below um, if there's anything in particular that you wanna see from my RenPy tutorials, Python, or anything else, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and goodbye.